One of the synchronization techniques is called exclusive lock. The basic syntax of the exclusive lock is basically just saying lock and then parenthesis. So within the parenthesis is a lock object. We're going to talk about when we jump into Visual Studio. And then you use curly braces to surround the critical section. We call the everything within the curly braces the body of the lock. Right. So everything that is within the body of the lock is usually the critical section. And when you apply the lock this way, the body of the lock can only be executed by maximum one thread. No other thread will be able to access the code within the body of the lock while a lock is being held by another thread. So this essentially makes the operations within the body of the lock atomic. Although they are divisible, but it's as if they are atomic, just because they can only be executed by one thread. So let's jump into Visual Studio and see it in action. So in order to apply the lock, first we need to have a lock object. I'm using .NET 8. In .NET 9, things is slightly different, but in .NET 8 or uh, previous versions, which is C Sharp 12, uh, including C Sharp 12. What you can do is you can just declare an object like this, and you're going to say counter lock, and uh, you can just say new object like this. Now, this can be used to lock a critical section like this. So now let's go to the critical section right here, and then we can say lock, and then we apply that to the counter lock, and we use curly braces to specify which is the critical section to be included in the body. And it's just like this. It's very simple. Now, when we do this, the this code can only be executed by one thread. It's not possible that both threads are executing this. Right? And it's, it's going to avoid the problem that we had before. All right, so let's run this and, and see what happens. All right, now you can see that the final counter value is 200,000. Now, if I run it again, it's going to be the same thing. See, every single time it's going to be 300,000. And that's just because we applied the exclusive lock. And it's as if this line becomes an atomic operation, although it's not. But we are using the lock to make it behaves like atomic operation. Now, one more thing I want to mention is that the lock has within itself a try catch mechanism, try catch and finally mechanism. That means that you don't have to worry about what if inside here, because this is just one, one line of code. Uh, in real world project, you may have complicated operations within the body of the lock. And what if it throws exception? Uh, you may worry that if it throws exception and the lock is not released, then other threads won't be able to get the lock and everything is blocked. You don't actually have to worry about that because within the lock, there is a try and finally mechanism there. So inside the finally section there, the lock is always released. You don't have to worry about releasing the lock when you use the lock keyword. And another thing, as I mentioned, in C Sharp 13, which comes with .99, and it's still in preview at this moment. I haven't installed it yet, but in there, what's recommended is that instead of using an object, you use uh, system.threading.lock. I think it's called that. As you can see that it's not actually available in my version because I'm using C Sharp 12. So I have to do I think it would be look like something look like this in C Sharp 13. So I have to do what is recommended by the previous versions. Right? So I'm just using a object here. Um, this can be a any reference type. It doesn't have to be object. And the best practice is to use a dedicated lock that has only one purpose, which is to protect the critical section here. And I think that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.